I've got these uh, black and white images here. And I'm going to put these black and white images in a slideshow. So I've got to make a background that's going to be black and white to put these images on. So what I'm going to do in this video right here is make the background to put the black and white images on. And it's going to be black and white and red, black and white and red for everything. I've opened up a window at 1280 by 720 and uh, what is his name? Oh my god. Kendall. I've been watching him on here and he makes these really unique things. They're really unique looking. And what I'm going to do is play with this idea on black, white, and red. As a matter of fact, I wonder if I do this. I wonder if I take this. New from visible. You take that edit. Copy. Edit. Paste as a new image. Let me make this image so it can fit in a window. Uh, view. Fit in a window. Now I'm going to turn this into three colors. It's what you call indexing. You index your image. I'm going to say turn it down to three colors only. And that's what I get. That's the three colors. Now if I can take those colors and turn them into black, white, and red, then I've got a very unique looking thing here. So I will take the yellow color. First, I don't even have to do that. I'm already separated. So I will take my yellow color, all my yellow colors, put a new layer in here. And in that new layer, I'm going to paint those white. Oh, I can't paint them white because I've got the mode on index. Got to put it back to RGB. Now I can go and paint it white. Let me take that whole image. Now I can paint them white. Okay, so there's my white. So let's go down and select none. And I'll use the uh, green. I don't know if it's really green. I don't know what color that is. But we'll take that color. We'll put a layer up on top here. And we'll take that color and paint it red. So this is what I've got so far. Select none. Okay, now that's what I have. What if I take only those colors? Only those two colors. And make a black shadow out of it. So if I select everything, I'm going to select the clear. And invert. If you... I've always select the transparency of an image and then I invert it. 
That way you haven't got those little stray ant aliases and pixels and stuff like that. So I just do it for a habit. With this right here, I wouldn't even have that problem, but that's what I do. So I invert it. Now it's inverted, I can take here, put myself a blank layer in, and paint it black. And you'll notice see, it says forbidden because I'm not in an area I can paint. I can paint on the red though. There I can paint. And select none. Now, if I take that and offset it, That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. Okay, let's save that. I'm going to do something else too. But I, I like that. There's that because we've got that one. No matter what, we've got that one now. Once you save from the, uh, if you go to layer and save new from visible, no matter what happens down here, I've got that saved. So I can actually duplicate that if I want to and stick one down at the bottom, very bottom, and. Uh, Matter of fact, I'll stick with a couple of them. I want to I try something different here. So if I don't do it that way, I say, well, I want to select my green, that deeper green, no, the darkest color in there. I'll select that, get it. Okay. So if I go here and select it, There it is. Now up on a new layer up on top, I'll take and paint that black. Now when we put these together, we'll see what we have. And here we'll insert a white layer. Select none. And see it's all white. Now let's see what we have here. Well, that's definitely more interesting there than what the, what the other one is. That may add a bit to it, but I don't know. Yeah, that is a little more detail in there. So let's save this. Export as black and white back. Black and white. back and save it as a ping you're better off to save things as a ping uh, you can use the JPEG but sometimes it makes a it leaves little artifacts it leaves coloring along the edges if you save it as a ping it's usually a pretty sharp uh, image so there we've exported it now if I go down to Synfig Studio we'll import that clip the clips on the desktop. It's um Let's see which ones this had a change to put to it. Test out test out and background. And that was black and white background, so there it is. So now I can bring that in here to use as a background. We'll make that background. Let's make this video, uh, let's plan on it being a uh, couple minutes. I can always stretch this out. What I got here, see what it's doing right there, my, my time. So my time is at 
one minute and, and two minutes, close enough to two minutes. Okay. Now what I have to do is get it to fill that full screen. So to do that, let me get rid of this here. We want to use um, crop and transform. And we want to use the transform. We go to the beginning of it. And that will work all the way through. What if we do in the beginning? If we don't have a uh, keyframe in it, it will stay the same. And let me see if I can just drag it. I might be able to drag it down. Otherwise, I'll have to actually get my numbers out. But I think I probably can drag it. No, I better get my numbers, I think. We'll tie it together if I want my height. So break that chain and make my height. Seven twenty. And my width. I have to go down and look at the image. 2560. So the width, we want 2560. And that will fill that window. Now I'm not doing it by hand. You really can do this. You say, okay, I want it to line up in the middle. And it will line up in the middle there, center vertically. Now it's in the beginning. Let's see if we can line it up on that side. Okay, there we go on that side. That's the very beginning of it. Now if we go to the end of the video, put a keyframe, and we line up on that side. And that's the end. Now what that means is over this span of this video, it will scan through that whole thing. We're going to go back here. Uh, let's reduce this so we can look at it all in the same thing. Uh, here it is. Now when we run that video, that's what will happen. So we've got this weird looking background. Now we're going to try to overlay some images on here. So let's back this up here and import some images. We're going to go to test here and go to black and white images. Oh, let's see. I can actually bring all of these in if I want to, and then I'll find out which ones I want to use. This is a lot of images to bring in. I don't know what it's going to do to my memory, but I'm going to try it just to see. It might not do hardly anything. Okay. It looks good. Okay, what we're going to do first. Black and white art. Let's do that for the very first one. There's the first image. And let's make it... Um, how long we want our image to be? Six seconds. We'll go with six seconds. A fade in, fade out. We'll go with... a. Yeah, six seconds, six seconds. Now we pick the image here and say, okay, transform it. Now we're gonna do this really, really weird, really weird. We're gonna take that and start that image with no opacity, zero opacity. Then we're gonna have it fade in, make a keyframe, and at that keyframe, it's gonna be 100. It'll stay at 100 until near the end of the five seconds. 
and it will start fading to zero. So there it is at zero. Oh, I think that my food just came in. So if we back this up, I back it up here, and look what happens here. There it fades in and it fades out. Now let's not do that the full size. Let's do something different with it. We'll go here and say, okay, we will start at the very beginning. Um, six forty by three sixty. That's one half the height, one half the width. Now we we'll just we we'll just we we'll just eyeball it. And let's center it. And there it is centered. Now we'll go to the next one. Because it's fading in, we can do about anything we want to with it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Center it and center it. Then at the last one, we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of the other one so we can uh, so it'll be the right size. This will be the if you if you don't if this is blank, it'll automatically inherit what that one there is. So we're going to be right there until at that point, make a keyframe and at the very end, keyframe at zero. That means fade away. So now let's watch it run. It faded in and it will fade out. Now let's add another. Uh, the book has started, so let's dance about it. And we'll do a transform on it. We'll shrink it down a little bit and we'll center it. I'm going to make it at zero, so it has, uh, so you can't see it, and immediately, I'll put a keyframe, we'll take it up to 100, and at near the end of the five seconds, we'll keep it there, and at the very end, it'll be zero. There's a keyframe, and we make it zero. If we back this up, that'll fade out, and the next picture will fade in. Okay, let's watch these uh, holding hands here. We'll let them just flash in. Flash in at 100%, and but we will shrink the size a little bit. And we center them. Center horizontal. And, and center vertical. And we'll leave that just come in. No fade in, no fade out or anything. Okay, we've got that. So we've got two images in. Oh, here's the gorilla. Look at the gorilla. This actually came from my clay figure. I took the clay figure, took a picture, turned it into an image, turned it into grayscale, then converted it into a black and white and red. Now that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. We'll take him and start him at zero. And 
At that point, we'll make it 100. There, we'll keep it at 100. A keyframe at the end, and at the end, we'll shrink them down and pull them clear off the screen. So that's what will happen to it. It'll disappear and go off that screen. So let's back up here and run it. Stays the same, stays the same. Oh, let's have it shrink a little. That'd be kind of nice. At that point, uh, so let's back up there and we'll have it shrink down a little bit. We'll keep it up in the same position. see if I get rid of that one it will stay the same it will inherit from that one there so we'll go here let it inherit that but it is leaving the screen before I want it to If we back up, it starts off big, shrinks down a little, goes back up a little, falls off the corner. So if we run it as the animation, and falls off the screen. Okay, so let's bring one in. Here's the little sunshine guy. We'll bring him in. We'll have him fade in. He won't fade in. We won't do it that way. We'll have it clear off the screen. We'll shrink it. Shrink it first. But we'll put it clear off the screen. And then by the first one, Then we'll bring it back in. It's just clear out of sight. So you don't know what's going on with up there. It's clear up out of sight. So to get it in, we'll say at this point right here, so there it is, it's clear out of sight. Let's get that. So right there, we want it back in the screen. So what we do here is put zero, zero. And that will set it the square right at that point. Now at this point we can adjust it like we want to. We'll take and adjust it over here. Move them in the middle. Let's, uh, let's set them center. Center it. And near the end we want it the same. At the very end we want it down to zero again. Here's one. We'll let this one be a little bit longer. We're going to do something with this differently. Okay. Again, we'll transform it with the uh, with the zero to start. At that point, 100. and we'll shrink it. And we'll put it over here on the side. Now, notice something on this side, what I'm doing here. Because we're going to try to have it follow what's happening here. As this screen underneath moves, we want it to move. So let's look at it and see what happens. Okay, see that little bit of room, that tiny bit of room right there? Let's try to get that same amount of room over here. That means 
that this will actually follow that screen. let's do it here back up there and here I'm going to take him and see if we can get him to follow that screen some See what we've done is so it follows as the screen moves. And then at the very end, we can have it fade to zero. And this will do something neat. It will follow the pattern of the screen. If we go here, as the screen moves, it will follow along with it. Okay. There it is. Now it's following right along with the screen. And it fades away. Now if I put a space in here, say okay, we'll insert a track, another video track in here. transform. Oh, I don't want the one with the Taiwan trip on it. Begin with zero. We'll begin it with zero, and it actually is going to overlap the other one. See that little bit of overlap of the face on top? And it will start fading in. So this is good. It's at zero, but right there. By the time the other one's faded away, this will be faded in. So I'll watch this effect here. There's that one. It's going to be following along a little bit. I'm just getting ready to fade out. The other one's coming in. And we got them. Okay. So let's back them up. Back them up. And uh, at this point right here, we'll resize it. Line it up horizontal. And line up vertical. And at here, another keyframe. At the end, a keyframe. And it will be zero. And it will be moving out. It will be moving out and fading out at the same time. So when we play it, There he is, and he fades out and moves out at the same time. Okay. Let's back it up. Make it zero. Doesn't make it zero yet. We'll leave it there, so we can uh, so we can look at it, and we'll bring it in. We'll actually locate it down here, and at this point here, we will bring it in. Now notice what these did. It went 26 to 723. If I want to bring it back up to where it belongs at, I just put this and put zero. And that lines it up exactly in the corner. Then I can readjust it. There it is up there. Now at that point, we'll take and shrink it down a little bit. Align it to the middle. 
and then at the very end keep it the same at the very end another keyframe and we'll make it transparent and we can have it actually be moving off the screen as it gets transparent. And here's the guy, Wish Upon a Star. No, there's a white suit sale. Notice this dude, black, black, but if he puts a white suit, all you'll be able to see is his face and his uh, hands. Okay. Transform. We go here. We'll start him off. Okay, let's start him off here. Then. Okay, as we start him off, we can shrink him down. That way, it will inherit this shrink all the way. And we'll do this one the same as the other. That was kind of neat what happened with the other one. It's where it followed along. And we'll let it uh, line up in the middle. And notice that little tiny, tiny piece right there. What we want to do is at the end of this, line that tiny, tiny piece up again. So we'll go clear to the end. And we'll line that. See, where is it at? And we line that tiny, tiny piece up right there. But barely show. And if we look here, what will happen when we run it is... Nothing, because I didn't use a keyframe. Okay, now... The idea was good, but the keyframe was no good. Okay, so we back up here. We go to the end. We use that point right there, that tip right there. we want it that stays right at that tip. Now if we run it, it should follow right along the same speed as the background. Okay, now what we'll do, it's at the very end. We'll do this one. Stop it. Make that a key frame at 100. Go to the end. And we won't have it fade complete. We'll have it fade to 70%. Uh, then it will just blank out from there. Let's look at it. Watch what it does. follows right along with the background and then good okay stop it and let's see we, we did, did we get that little I love you yeah we got the little I love you did we get the Superman I don't know if we got Superman in there I've actually got to go back and play him to see what one we've used it's not good it's 20 seconds or so okay there's black and white art the dancing guy comes in. The holding hand comes in. The clay face comes in. The dancing doodah comes in. Divided comes in. He creeps along with the side there. Superman comes in. Come on, Superman. 
Superman comes in. Then I love you comes in. Then the white suit sale comes in. Okay, we stop it. Okay, what do we want to do? We're getting near the end there. We're there at the very end. I'll put this in because I want that to be the last one. It's crying because it's going. Okay. The organs can go in there somewhere. I actually got veins. That's what it is. I shouldn't call it organs. It's veins. <laughs> okay, in there. There's some leaves. These are all... Th I went through a phase where I did a lot of black and white stuff. So that's where these images came from, is where I did that black and white phase at. And there's my sister. My sister's Jill. I've got more things I have rooms for. There it is. Now well, maybe, maybe I can get them all in there. There's washing clothes. I don't know if I have Wish Upon a Star. I can always do that one again if I don't, didn't have it. Okay, so what do I got? Oh, and the dancing right here. Okay. We're definitely going to be pinched for room to get them all in if we do it. Something's going to have to go. Well, I guess we can blend them right in. That's good enough. Okay. So that one, if we go to this one. That's the white suit. That's the one that followed along. Okay, the next one will just pop in. So we take it and put a transition on it, or transform it, and we'll uh, transform it down in size a little bit. That's a pretty crummy white, isn't it? Oh my God, that's not white. That's not good. Not white. Okay, so what if I do this? I'll take that, put it at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to paint the bottom white. We'll go to that one and we'll make whatever color that is and see if we can't get it to uh, uh, color to alpha. Color to alpha. Pick this background color right here. Uh, I see it's still leaving dots and stuff in. That's not good. It's better, but it's not good. Okay, let's see if I try to get that transparent background. Okay, so we turn it to uh, three colors. Mode, and the index, three colors. Okay, there it is. That'll turn it into the black, white, and the red. And we'll get all the white color out of there. And get rid of all of it. Okay, put the white in. Take it and merge it down. Merge down and save it. 
and we go back up here and reload it. I don't want to use that one, get rid of that one. And I don't think it will change automatically. It might, but I don't think so. I think that's in memory. Okay, let's reload Jill, add a clip. Jill. Oh, I saved it as a JPEG. I should never have done that. If I can do it again, what I did here. PNG, PNG. Okay, so now we'll try it again. How come that doesn't look like the same white? Is that in my imagination? I guess it is. Okay, let's transform it. We'll shrink it down a little bit. We'll center it. In the beginning, we'll have it uh, zero. Half a second or so in, it'll be at 100%. It'll stay. And at the end, it'll be down to translucent again, throw a key frame in, and we make it zero. Okay, and again, we can take that back one right there and say, well, let's, while it's going out, let's have it fade out and fall off the screen. And we'll do something with this one here. Just have this one already visible, but it will fade into the screen. So we want to align it that way. At this point, we want it to come into the screen. So that means at that point right there, we want this at zero, zero. At least zero, zero will make it visible enough that we can drag it where we want it. And we'll make them bigger. And we'll center it on the screen. At the very end, we'll keep it the same there. And then at the very end, a keyframe, and we'll have it go off that direction. So if we look at it and watch it go, it comes up from the bottom visible takes off up on top and this one here we have it start at zero by there is one hundred there it's 100 at the other very end another keyframe and it will be zero so 
So we've got this to finish up. But this is enough to show how this is going to be done. And at the very end, there will be a clip to show how the video actually turned out. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and click on the link above. Thank you.